if you look at Zelda dungeon structure too much, there's one problem in particular that's going on here. Everything going out from one central hub isn't really great for TTRPG design. Reason being, Zelda dungeons rely so much on one key fact that Link must obey this certain rule. And that is, every door requires a key. Every, every door that has a lock requires a key. This is not true of TTRPGs. They can put you on more linear rails like this. We kind of can't with TTRPGs. If you look at like the water temple here, this central hub, everything gets to branch out from that, but we'll eventually always keep looping back in on this. This is a deceptive railroad because no matter what, no matter what path you take, it's always going to lead back to this, which will eventually lead you back down this trail, right? This dungeon, you could also look at this as like, you can just look at the dungeon as this right here. Everything, the Guardian goes to this hub, this hub connects to this over here, bingo bango, right? Um, this is still a line. So what we would like to do is figure out how to, instead of doing this right here, I really love to try and make dungeons feel more like things like this. Like, weird, weird, weird. I like to try and think that maybe the players could get into an area from like any point. Aha, uh -huh. okay, I'm going to keep talking about Brad Kerr here for a second. Um, in Adventure Anthology 2, uh, kind of talking about this concept here. Okay, here we go. Um, now, this is a dungeon called uh, The Golden Asclepian uh, by Brad Kerr. And it's in Adventure Anthology 1, if you're thinking about playing this or whatever with a group. Highly recommend you check this book out, by the way. Uh, but yeah, spoilers, I guess, for that. Now... It's not really spoilers, just like this is an example of how they can get into the dungeon. The thing is, Brad built this in a way to where the players can get into it from multiple different entrances. So, like up here, this is the most clear one. There's two big doors they can get into it, right? Okay. There's guards out in front, so like maybe the most obvious one isn't the best way. And that's the thing, is like your players are looking for options. They want to make choices, so give them a lot of choices, right? It turns out... If they go down south to the beach, there's actually a cave entrance that can get them in over through here. It also turns out, because Brad Kerr's a great writer like that, um, he accounted for all these rooms that are on the outside having windows that they can crawl through, right? He also accounted for another entrance in here. I want to see, chat, where do you think this other entrance is? I think there's about eight different entrances into this dungeon in total. This is an absolute jungle gem. It is marked on the map, by the way. And I really, I, I, I love this. Orbital drop. This marks right here a spot where there's like a sun, like a dome, um, like a domed window that the players can just drop in from the, uh, the literally the goddamn middle of the dungeon. They can just drop in right there and be smack dab in the center of it, right? Like, I love that. I, I fucking love that there are like 10 different ways they can get into this fucking dungeon. Awesome. What this means is um, Brad Kerr is not designing with the idea of a boss key in mind, right? The dungeon itself does not have like a, um, a gate that is preventing you from just running into the final boss or whatever, right? Yeah, it's, it's so cool. They'll just use Passwall, they walk in and it, yeah. So that's the thing is like, you can't really build dungeon structure around the idea that, like, your players will not have the ability to literally just walk through the fucking walls. So, like, get get that, like, preventative barrier out of your mind. You know, you have to, like, free yourself of those thoughts of, like, well, as long as they go down this path right here, it won't break it. No, 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 no. Don't, don't rely on that. Don't build in a manner in which it could be broken. The barriers like that, those kinds of like guardrails where you feel like I have to write it like this and if they do anything weird, the dungeon can break. That's a fault of taking a lot of your dungeon design inspiration from like Zelda, Skyrim, um, Dark Souls in a way. Um, unfortunately, like one of my favorite game series of all time does have this pretty bad situation of like dungeons definitely just kind of feeling like I run in, do the thing. It, it just kind of feels like a big puzzle, right? Not so much this, like, 
I can see that thing, and I can approach this situation from, like, any angle. Um, honestly, though, you want to know of a video game that I really like that did take this more kind of jaquazed approach to it? Fucking Far Cry. Far Cry has their, like, outpost rating, like, you have to go and take this base or whatever. And the thing that I love is that these bases are, like, if you just want to pick people off by, like, sniping them or something like that, you can do that in Far Cry right like it's not this huge buildup of like well we have to we have to make sure that they can't get in through this over here i have to make sure that i dispel all the things that they try to do over here that's bad that leads to a bad vibe for your dungeon you want to give them as many ways that they can like plop in wherever because whenever you do that you start to like kind of shuck this anxiety of like okay well they can do anything yeah sure okay they can do anything okay so, like, don't build your dungeons around the idea that I have to prevent them from doing things, right? It goes beyond just the idea of, like, this is what we know is fun, and it literally starts to play on the core concept of the rules of improv. Build your dungeons around the idea that they should be saying yes and whenever they possibly can, you know? Like, keep building the dungeons with the idea that if a player tries something weird we should try and let that work. You know? Like, if they want to climb up to the rooftop and find this fucking, like, uh, sunlight that gets them into the base, cool. In fact, let it drop right into the motherfucking, like, pit where they're doing, I don't know, exercises or whatever the hell's happening in here. You know? 